Okay, let's move on to bonding, and we'll talk about bonding of wires, and we'll talk about bonding of samples uh, quickly here. Here's two examples. Um, one of the materials we really like to use here at, is uh, VGE, and I think it's called GE Varnish 5031, if anybody has questions about where to obtain some of this or any more questions about it, please contact us, and we can either uh, we can either get you some directly or put you in touch with, uh, with one of the manufacturers. So what is important here is you want to have the wire touching the surface. Let's look at why. Number one, you've got dual heating uh, as well as conductive heating. Conductive heating is because the wire is, is, is coming from room temperature. It's lagged at four, four, something like 40 Kelvin, the radiation temperature, and then it terminates at something close to 4 Kelvin. So you've got two modes of heating through, through the copper. The next thing here is if you glob a lot of VGE, remember VGE has an emissivity of close to 1. And so as you add more and more VGE, it's, it's basically, which, which makes, causes it to act like a, a black body absorber. Any radiation that's present will tend to end up in, uh, on the VGE and, and then uh, end up as heat. Now, this wouldn't be so bad if, if there were good conductance from the wire to the surface. But see this little space on the bottom? This creates a huge thermal resistance. Now that thermal resistance be becomes really important as the heat load on the wire goes up from the joule heating and from the radiation. So it's, you can see why here the example to the right, we've got the wire actually touching the surface. And in, in some case, cases, if you can apply a force, without damaging the wire, if you can apply a force to it, you're doing much, much better. Moving on to samples. Here's an example. We're going to use VGE or grease under the sample. Uh, indium also works well, especially if it's heated a little bit. In some cases, you can e even use indium as a solder. Now, in this example, the way I've drawn this picture, VGE tends to be uh, something that, that, is, uh, that is a little bit more the, the example to look at here. Let's say that this is VGE and it, you know, it looks obvious enough in the picture. You don't want to mount your, your sample at a slight angle. However, this is very commonly in practice the thing that happens because you can't tell how well, how flat your sample is against the surface. And the thing about VGE, the nice thing about VGE is that it sets up and dries very quickly. The, the, but that also turns out to be the thing that can bite you, and it's a gotcha. Because it sets up very quickly, you may just start to get your sample pressed down, and then you have a slight wedge in there, and then the, the thermal conductance through that is not very good. So it would, it's much better to have uh, some force pressing down on your sample if you're able to, and to press, to press that, make that interface very thin. One trick here is that if you can put a drop of acetone on the surface of your part, and then as you add VGE, that acetone thins it immediately, and you have a little bit more time to apply force, and it, it won't the VG won't set up quite as quickly, and it also will be a little bit a little bit thinner. Now, when you're what we what we often do here is if we can set a small weight on the object, and that that might be a sample, it might be a thermometer. Set a small object on top of it so that you've got an even weight on it, and you're not. Uh, if, if it's your, uh, your finger or if it's a um, pair of tweezers that you're holding and you're trying to apply force and you're trying to wait two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, a lot of times you're moving around. And those small movements cause the bond and the small interface to be jeopardized. And so if you can set something uh, on top of there, that works really well. Uh, 
just really quickly here, a uh, couple options on sample bonding here. Uh, thermal grease, APIs, APAs on N is a good example. Of course, it's pliable at room temperature and it freezes at low temperatures. VGE is a good example. VGE is not permanent. That's, that's one of the powerful things about VGE is you can add a little bit of acetone after your experiment and it will easily come up and you can remount it at a later time. Now, if you add a little bit of heat, say from a halogen lamp or um, a, a heat gun, be careful with the heat gun because uh, you can easily overheat your sample, but if you can add a, just a little bit of heat, then the setup time will be very quickly and within 30 minutes you can cool down. Now, otherwise, you, I would recommend you wait for you know, 12 to 24 hours. Epoxy, of course, is a, a permanent technique for mounting a sample, and indium is another nice, nice technique. The problem with indium is it tends to be a little bit thick, and you also have to be aware of cold flow. So if you've got a bolted joint or some pressure on, on a joint, and you've got inter, indium as the interface, now this tends to be the case for a, a higher force joint. When, when, when you cool down, that joint many times will increase in force and the, and the indium will cold flow. It's actually still soft enough compared to the metals joining it and the bolts holding it together that it will slightly flow. Then when you warm up, it will have created either a small gap or it will have reduced the force for which uh, the, it was being held together. And so the second time you cool down, then you won't have as good a conductance. So in that case, just retighten the bolts.